All right, so behind me, I've got everything that I think I need to put an eight speed automatic right behind my 3.6 liter 2016 JKU. So I've done a bunch of research on this swap and a ton of people have done it, but it's mostly off-road shops that are doing it and a small community of people that are doing it in-house. But what I've discovered is most guys are putting these behind V8s. They're not putting it behind the 3.6 liter. So I wanted to do a video that basically just shows you all the parts that I used um, and everything that I've learned to do this swap. So uh, amongst other things, mine's a little bit unique because it has a manual transmission behind it. Most everyone has a JKU or JK with a automatic in it. Um, all that means for me is I get to spend a little bit more money than you guys. So um big shout out to todd over at jeep speed shop he's kind of the pioneer behind doing these swaps um a lot of the pieces that i have for this are from their shop they've got a youtube they've got a couple facebook groups of all that information on there um but again there was just some missing pieces a little bit of misinformation so i've created an excel sheet um, that I am willing to share with you guys at any point in time. I'll also post these up on Facebook, but I'm gonna go through all the parts that I have. Um, and then throughout this process, I'll do a couple videos of the installation and then hopefully get this bad boy out and ripping. So again, pile of parts here. Um, this is the Excel sheet that I've created. When I'm all done, um, I'm gonna fill in every little item that I use, along with pricing, where I got it, and a grand total of everything. So if that interests you, um, it is coming. So to give you some background, of the eight speed that I have here, this is out of a 2024 Ram 1500, four wheel drive with a 3.6 liter. So. Um, I bought this from a junkyard with a 12 month warranty, uh, 12,000 miles for $650. And when you're looking for these, they will say 850 RE on the top and make sure that you're buying the four wheel drive model that has this adapter. So um, again, I mentioned that mine's a manual. This is where I do get a benefit. With a manual Rubicon case, this will bolt straight up to the transmission. And if you have an automatic, um, you're going to have to convert your transfer case to a manual transfer case. I luckily did not have to do that. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're doing this swap. Um, I will be trying to focus in on all the part numbers for you guys to make this a little bit easier. But again, if you have questions, Post in the comments and we'll get you going. So why an eight speed transmission? Um, for several reasons. One, this thing is a manual and honestly, um, tried wheeling it with the 42s and I'm used to a Toyota with dual cases and 4.7s and it was just, honestly, it's hard to drive. Part of it was just cause I was learning the Jeep. Um, but I decided, you know what? I've already gone this far, let's do an automatic. So. The benefit to the eight speed is first and second gear are a lower ratio than what you would typically find in the JKU. So that combined with a Rubicon case means that I'll have a lower um, crawl ratio. And then also being that it's an eight speed, seventh and eighth gear is gonna be like two more overdrives. So in theory, granted it's not a daily driver, it's on 42s, but everyone that I've seen, this is gonna drive a lot better on the road um, and I was gonna convert it to automatic, so why not go the eight-speed route? So yes, the transfer case bolts into um, my 850RE transmission, but something to consider is also gonna be the length of the transmission. So um, my automatic 850RE comes in at 29 and a quarter, and then the manual that I took out See if I can go here, give or take. It's about 26 and 5 eighths. So what that means is I'm also gonna need drive lines. Um, I did not measure before removing all this stock components. So we'll get the transmission in, we'll figure that out. There's a small chance that I'll get lucky and the drive shafts will work uh, temporarily for testing. 
But obviously with droop and up travel, we're gonna wanna get those corrected as well. So keep that in mind when doing the swap is your stock drive lines are not gonna work. And that doesn't matter whether you have an automatic or manual plan on needing new drive lines. All right, so here is my table of parts and I'm gonna go through everything, explain what it is, uh, whether you need it or whether I chose to go that route. So you can make that determination for yourself. So again, we talked about the 850 out of a newer Ram 1500 pickup. You can also do an 845, which is out of a, an older Ram pickup as well. So same rules still apply. But according to Todd, the 850 is obviously the better uh, route to go, mostly because it's a newer vehicle. I think they did some internal changes. In addition to that, this transmission only had 44,000 miles when I purchased it. Um, normally what I've seen those go for is about $1,000. So $650 is an absolute score. So from Jeep Speed Shop, you are gonna need Todd's plug and play harness kit so this is a full transmission harness um, with a dedicated computer for it and then when you do that Todd's gonna need to know a little bit of information so if you have an automatic you're good to go in my particular case I needed a automatic ECU because my Jeep was a manual so i had to purchase this ecu i think it was a hundred dollars at the junkyard and then i sent that to jeep speed shop and they programmed it to this jeep's vin for free so keep that in mind you're also going to need to tell them what shifter you're using so if you go to jeep speeds youtube he's going to show you a ton of shifters he's got lots of options uh, most recently, he talks about using a JL shift knob with a different style shifter. So mine, my shifter is out of a Cherokee. Hopefully you can see this part number here. I'll put it on the screen as well. So I did an eight speed Cherokee shifter. I purchased that off of eBay. You can also use a charger or a challenger, but I don't like the minivan style shifter that they use. And then I also bought this. This is a JL shift knob. You have to uh, drill a new hole for the set screw and that's essentially it. So JL shift knob. And then Jeep Speed Shop also makes a bezel that that boot snaps into. So you get this at Jeep Speed Shop. So he's gonna need to know what um, shifter you're using, the VIN number of the Jeep, all that good stuff. Now this does not have a shift indicator on it, right? Doesn't show you manual, neutral, or any of that stuff. So the JL shift indicator is found here. Again, I'm gonna put these part numbers on the screen, but here is the part number for the shift indicator as well. So those are important things. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go left to right of my table. So the stock um, oil pan is plastic. They recommend upgrading to a steel version. So this is out of a JL, comes with the gasket. It also has a filter that's replaceable. And part number for that guy is here. I just bought this brand new from MoparArizonaParts.com, I believe is what it was. And then you're also gonna need a transfer case shift bracket. Now, if you have a manual like I did, the manual one that comes on is exactly the same as what they recommend. Now, I did not know that. And if you look at uh, Todd's list, he recommends this plate which again is the same one that comes on the manual. You do have to notch it, do a little notch mark there. And then this guy goes, well, in some fashion, you'll see it later. 
It bolts up just like this here onto the transmission for your shifter. <clears throat> and then you're gonna need this plate from Jeep Speed Shop. Plate B, and what this does, this bolts to your stock cross member. <clears throat> and then you're gonna need the a transmission mount. Your factory rubber bushing mount will work. However, Todd, I believe recommended this one right here off of his video. This is hard to find. I got it off of eBay, but this bolts to the bottom of the transmission. This goes into here, and then this guy bolts to the stock transfer case. So when you buy the Jeep Speed harness, it's gonna come with this plate. So this is included. And this plate is gonna bolt to the sled. The sled is where your shifter goes. And then this guy here bolts onto there. So that's included. One thing to note, again, if you have an automatic, your sled is the one that you need. This bolts straight to your sled. If you had a manual like me, you gotta buy a sled. So these were all over eBay. But I got this one here for the same price as that you would get it on eBay and it's brand spanking new. So just keep that in mind, do some price shopping. Now, the bell housing bolts directly to the back of the 3.6 liter. I'm getting cotton mouth from all this talking. So surprisingly enough, right? So again, bell housing bolts right to the 3.6 liter, but you do need a flywheel and this is both for automatic or manual, you need to buy a flywheel because you need to buy the flywheel for that Ram 1500. So that's the guy that you're gonna need, super cheap. Now, when you get the transmission, if you look at one of my earlier videos, you need to pull the valve body computer, which is this guy here, and you need to ship it to Todd at Jeep's, Jeep Speed Shop and they will flash this guy for free as well. So that is required, you need to do it. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> um, also, if you have a manual, you're gonna need to get one of these guys here. So this is the automatic shift cover. Um, so this nice plate that I showed you earlier, Basically, this is the filler that goes in here. And then that JL shift boot snaps right inside. So that snaps in there. Your boot fits in there super nice. It clicks right in, you're good to go. Um, so if you have an automatic, you don't have a clutch pedal, you don't have to worry about that. They recommend upgrading to uh, the automatic brake pedal if you have a manual. So, same deal. I did a bunch of looking on eBay and you can get a rusted out used brake pedal. I forget the exact price, but essentially I got this guy brand new from Mopar. There's the part number. Um, and it is brand spanking new. And this guy is supposed to just slide right in there. So hopefully that works out as planned. Now we're gonna get into the stuff that I changed that wasn't necessarily recommended, but it was the route in which I go. So if you watch the Jeep Speed videos, you have your in and your out for your transmission cooler lines. And Todd does a really good job. He's got this piece, you bolt it on here and you tap these threads. And then you can use uh, OEM transmission brake lines, or sorry, transmission lines that go to the cooler and all that stuff. I don't want to tap this. Again, I don't need to use OEM lines. When I priced them out, they were uh, too rich for my blood. If you go on eBay, these are available. Basically, this guy slides right in to those two holes, no tapping needed. It's got a bolt that secures it, and now it is gonna give you A-in lines to run those to uh, aftermarket uh, transmission lines. Now, the one thing that I didn't find till recently is this transmission likes to run a little bit warm. 
uh, like 185 to 200 is like proper operating temperatures. So the problem is, if you run those lines straight to a cooler, you risk that transmission being too cold and it not operating the way it's designed to operate. So I purchased this from Improved Racing and basically it's a thermostat. This guy will stay close till the, the transmission gets to 185 degrees and then it opens up. So um, that's what I'm gonna use. I bought all of the special AN fittings that go into the plate and into this. Then I bought this nice kit here. Haven't even opened it yet. It's got all my lines in it, all my clamps. And then I chose to go with an aftermarket cooler um, to run as my transmission cooler because I removed my OEM gas tank. I'm gonna mount this up onto the floor where my OEM gas tank's at. I bought a thermostat switch that turns on at 200 degrees along with a relay. And so when the transmission gets to 185, this is gonna open up and at 200, that guy will or 200 or above that guy will turn on and cool the whole system so pretty excited to run that this is a pretty big kit comes with everything you pretty much need to do uh that installation another thing that i didn't go over that's on the table is you're also going to need your flex plate bolts you can go oem but these are available much cheaper one four one three one and then you're also going to need port converter bolts, 13875. So I got both of those just on Amazon to make it as easy as possible. And that's pretty much the rundown of all the parts. Now is pretty much the labor. So I need to pull that pan back out. I need to put in the valve body computer, mount the flex plate, and then basically the transmission can go in. I'll go inside. I'll pull the... Um, shift base and everything that was there for the manual, install the sled, and then basically get to moving and grooving. So that is the full parts list for the eight speed swap. The next video is gonna be me doing the installation. Um, and again, watch my next videos because if I find something that doesn't work, I'm going to update it in those videos. I can't go back and update a video once I post this, but I will be posting all of my findings and changes to this excel sheet and if you leave your email in the comments i'll email you this at any point in time again uh, i can't stress enough i'm just a hobbyist i'm not doing this for a living as you can see i'm just in my garage um, but at the end of the day it, it needs to work so i found out i'll find out what needs to work and i'll update it and that way if you guys are looking to do the eight speed swap you know what it's all about and hopefully this video gives you the confidence to do it in your garage as well so Thanks for watching guys. Looking forward to the next couple videos. Like and subscribe if you can, and uh, we'll see you out on the next one.